Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! When we last left off, Mario was looking at his reflection, imagining what life would have been like if he was born a Goomba with a blue baseball cap. Who'd have thunk that Mario was so uncomfortable in his body? He feels so wrong having arms. Anyway, we got ourselves a situation here. We got one key and two locked doors. Uh, which one is the correct one? Huh, apparently both. <laughs> Stripeback says he likes his mushrooms so much he wants to be one. You know, there you go. Oh, um, interesting. This is an albino dino. He looks exactly like that stone statue over there. He's a guard for this palace. I never thought you could talk to these creatures. Wouldn't it be, it be something if we made friends with these guys? You know, it seems like they like facing us when we talk to them. You can't go through here unless you solve the puzzle. Once you solve the puzzle, we'll let you through. Okie dokie. So what we got here? Three statues and three suspicious looking spots on the floor. And moving one moves the real life creature. So what we need to do here is get them facing in different directions in order to be able to push them. It's a pretty interesting concept I gotta say. At the same time, I'm not sure I would want to be an albino dino if my movement was tied solely to a statue. Because, you know, statues aren't really known for moving around very much. Still though, once you know what to do, it's actually a pretty dang simple task. Definitely not one of the more difficult puzzles in the game. Now, let's take a moment to admire that dino behind. And go ahead and push the last one in place. Well, that was kind of significant in a way. I wonder if this means we're at the end of the dungeon. It does. So what am I going to want to do here? Um... I want to recover some of my FP. We got a heal block here, but I don't want to heal. I want to keep my HP low. Make things a little bit easier for me. So what do I want to do here? I don't want to use the gem and jelly. Oh, I can just use the maple syrup. So that's what I'll do. Oh, um, actually, before we move on, let me rearrange my badges. We don't want Mega Quake. I know some of you are screaming at me, yes, you want Mega Quake! But no, I do not need Mega Quake. Instead, what I want is feeling fine. Okay, this is actually a pretty neat scene. I like this. Who comes to my palace? Oh, so you're the Crystal King that we heard rumblings about. Well, heard a rumble about. Mario, you finally arrived. <laughs> I know you believe you can save the Star Spirit, but I'm afraid I won't let you. First I shall defeat you, then I shall present Bowser with an iced Mario gift. Oh, and there we go. Straight to the point, I guess. Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by hoping that timeout works.
There's a 50-50 chance. Hopefully I land on Tails. Yay! Awesome! That's a great start. And I won't watch, because this guy has a bit of defense, so we need to break through that defense. And would also not be a bad idea to go ahead and... Let's see here. Let's boost Mario's attack. Every little bit helps. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that he does not get another chance to attack. Didn't quite make him dizzy, but I got another couple turns to try. Yep. I'm gonna keep right on at it. Because every time I succeed, the counter resets. Attack power has returned to normal. So I want to buff that again, probably. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And, uh... Oh, hey! Yes, I will take this. Thank you. No stunning that time. And he's back to normal. Okay, I want to cause damage while I am able to cause damage, so... Dizzy has a slightly lower chance to work. But I'm going for it. Oh wait, never mind, he's dead. Oh no! The last star spirit! King Bowser, forgive me! Well, that was easy. I feel like RNG was totally on my side for that fight. And I am happy with that. Beer Force says, I'm back. What did I miss? You didn't miss anything. Alright, Mario has saved the last star spirit, Kalmar. From the Crystal Palace at the edge of the world. Now, with the seven star spears together, he has the power to challenge Bowser. And the Star Rod. At last, it is time for Mario's showdown with evil King Bowser. Can Mario rescue Princess Peach and recover the Star Rod? Or will wishes forever go ungranted? Actually, it's going to be quite a bit before we go after Bowser. There's a lot of optional stuff that I need to go after. Anyway, before we save and continue, it is once, a ti once again time for the boss review. So, I'm going to be straight up with you. The Crystal King is pretty much the reason why I decided to grade all the chapter bosses in this game. I have some qualms with him. But first... For context, let's review the other bosses. First, I gave the Cooper Brothers an A+. They had a lot of screen time, even including before Chapter 1 officially started, and they had a lot of personality. I love them. Then I gave Tutan Koopa a C+. He wasn't present until you entered the ruins, but once you did enter the ruins, he was haunting you throughout, and he had enough personality. I didn't think he was too bad. Then I gave Tubba Blubba an A, just a flat A. 
You don't meet him until halfway through Chapter 3, but he had this air of mystery about him that I really liked, and it was there even before the chapter started. And also, his secret weakness was creative. Then I gave General Guy and the Shy Guy Army a B+. Even though you didn't find out General Guy was a thing until you fought him, it was all about the Shy Guy Army as a whole, and they were ever-present throughout the entire chapter. And once again, before the chapter even started. And then came the piranha, uh, the lava piranha. Um, he was mentioned once before Chapter 5 started, and then the game forgot about him. Even Twink forgot about him. And then the game reminded you that he existed in the volcano, and then you fought him. And aside from the fake-out death, the fight wasn't even that special. And then came Huff and Puff. I gave Huff and Puff a B. Even though you didn't meet him until it was time to fight him, you did hear talk of him, and you could see the effects of his evilness throughout the entire chapter, so he wasn't bad. Also, the fight wasn't that bad either. It was actually kind of good, too. And so, now we have the Crystal King. Alright, as a reminder, at the start of this chapter, during the preview image where you would normally see a silhouette of who you're going to be fighting, I covered up the Crystal King. I wanted to specifically hide him because I wanted to demonstrate how little the game prepares you for him. We didn't find out that he was a thing until a single, I think, club uh, mentioned him halfway through this palace. And that was basically it until we fought him. Now, as far, to, as far as his fight goes, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, no pun intended. Like, if I didn't paralyze him the whole fight, he would uh, start by throwing his ice bits at you, and... Uh, he also does this thing where he can zap you with ice and freeze you in ice, which is pretty dangerous, and the reason why I had the Feeling Fine badge. And then, in the second half of the fight, he makes ghost copies of himself, and you gotta figure out which one is the real him. Which is pretty simple to do if you have the Quake Hammer. Up until he realizes what you're doing and start cloning himself in the air. And then you gotta figure that out without the Quake Hammer. So yeah, had I not paralyzed him, it actually would have been a pretty interesting and actually kind of challenging fight. But outside of the fight itself, that's all he's got going for him. He's basically just there to fill the chapter boss quota. I feel like he could have been so much more interesting. Like, maybe if the people in Shiver City or Starborn Valley mentioned him. Like, maybe he could have been like, Legend has it that a ruthless Crystal King lived up in this palace, and the ghostly ancestor got the help of the snowmen to defeat him. Uh, well, heck, for all we know, that is actually what happened for real, and Mario was just asleep during that part of the story. But... I pretty much have to judge what's there, and what's there, it isn't much. And that is why I give the Crystal King a fat honking F. I mean, it's an F+, plus because the fight can be interesting, but it's still an F. Oh, Mario. I wonder what he's doing now. I wish I knew if I was helping him at all. Of course you are. Mario will be fine. You should be proud of your efforts. Mario knows all you've done. And don't you worry, Princess. You'll be able to talk to him in person before long. Tee hee hee. I hope you're right, Twink. Thanks for cheering me up. Let's go back to the room, shall we? Uh, just a moment. I want to wait here because of a reason. And that is the reason right there. There are only two scenes in the game that play this song, and they last so long... Rather, let me try that again. They go by so quickly that you never realize that there's a second part to the song. I mean, it's basically an alternate version of Peach's theme. 
But I still think that's interesting enough that I wanted to kind of point that out. Oh, Princess Peach! Your cuddly old Bowser's here! I mean, if he wasn't evil and probably would claw me and burn me to death, I would cuddle him. Can't we have a friendly conversation for a change? Come on, let me see a smile. I have nothing to say to you. Oh, don't be such a pill. You're stuck with me for a long, long time, beautiful. You'd better get used to it. Mario is coming, Bowser, and you can't stop him. Gwahaha! <laughs> oh, you poor silly girl. I'm invincible with this star rod, didn't you know? Mario's no match for me. He's history. Get over it. Your raunchiness! We have an emergency! You know... I find it weird, even though it fits him, that Bowser would accept your raunchiness as a greeting to him. <clears throat> it better be important. I'm right in the middle of a friendly chat with a princess. Uh, Mario has now saved all of the star spirits. There is a chance he could come here using their power. We must make ourselves ready in case he shows up. What? Gah! Mario! Isn't that Junior Troopa's line? Okay, listen, Kami Koopa. Send everyone to their posts. We'll ambush him the second he enters my castle. Princess Peach, why don't you come with me to watch? You can have a front row seat to see Mario get crushed. You! Yeah, you! Tie her up immediately! If she gets out this time, heads will roll! Okay, so Mario, or Bowser is kind of a bad guy after all, if he's actually threatening to chop off people's heads. You big Koopa, show some respect to the princess. What is this whining little glittering thing? Confetti? Gah, buzz off. Twink! Take the princess, now, let's move. No! Well, it took an entire seven chapters, but the story has finally gotten exciting. Uh, my name is Kalmar. Mario, well done. Thank you for coming. You have successfully rescued all of us star spirits. We are in your debt. Now all that is left is for you to challenge Bowser. My power should help you. To bring back the Star Rod, to beat Bowser, to bring peace back to the Mushroom Kingdom, and to save Princess Peach. Mario's star and she goes up to 7, Mario can now use Up and Away, a new Star Spirit power. With up and away, you can turn all enemies into stars. Mario, you must make your way back to Shooting Star Summit. From Shooting Star Summit, we'll prepare the route to Star Haven. The name of this route is Star Way. Missed opportunity to call it Star Road. Once you've traveled the Star Way, you'll finally reach Star Haven. My only wish is for you to save this precious world. You can do it, Mario. Goodbye for now. Okay, I actually do want to take place at- or talk about the scene that took place just a minute ago with Princess Peach and Bowser. That thought that I had. Seven chapters in and the story finally picked up. That is the same thought I had the first time I played this game. Because, yeah, okay, this adventure has certainly had its moments, 
Like the Tubba Blubba Chase and the Murder Mystery. But for the most part, this adventure has been basically a casual stroll. Not that exciting. I want to make a comparison to Paper Mario 2. In that game, the exciting feeling that I got from Princess Peach being tied up just then... That came out wrong, let me try it again. That exciting feeling that came from the exciting scene of things getting exciting when pa Bowser is suddenly being more evil. I got that same feeling at the end of Chapter 2 in Paper Mario 2. And then pretty much every chapter after that. So, yeah. As much as I enjoy this game... Uh, the story isn't the best part of it. Anyway, I am standing here because I want to grab this. And I want to kind of bring up what's going on here. I left behind these items earlier, and... Yeah, if you take these items, it actually blocks your path from getting to the... Star place. Hypothetically speaking, you could grab these and then still be able to get up to the uh, Crystal Palace, what you would want to do is probably put something back. Kind of like this. You can put pretty much anything like this back. Like a, like a pebble, perhaps? Uh, let's see here. Let me rethink this. I kind of do want the stopwatch. It might save my bacon in a little bit. And what else we got here? A shooting star? Yeah, I'll take the shooting star. Let me put this something here. Super shroom. Let's put the back the super shroom so that I can also grab the shooting star. Oh, uh, before I move on, we no longer need healing fine. So, swap that back for the quake hammer. Mega quake. Can I avoid you? Yes. I got a new star spirit power to try out. But I'm gonna wait and for just a little bit. Good boy. And you got me. Alright, let's try out this new Star Spirit power, shall we? Up and away. Turn enemies into stars and blow them away. Only cost two star points. Huh. Neat. Boop. Okay, fine. I can do it again. Now, I will say that that is not a guarantee, by the way. It also apparently does not get you any experience points. So, yeah. We'll say, though, it's kind of surprising that such an attack that basically instant death only costs two star points. I would have expected it to cost three. That, that seems like it would have been a little bit more appropriate. Anyway, um, now that the Crystal Palace is taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and see how everybody is doing in these two snowy towns. Now that the wrath of the king guy... Oh, come on! Go away!
Matty Ratty says, well, it doesn't give you any start points. They probably treated that as part of the cost and all. Oh, you got a good point. If it uh, still gave you start points for it, then it probably would have definitely cost more to use. Actually, I'm going to take this because I want it. No, oh, gosh dang it. Never mind. I will want one later. Anyway, as I was saying, let's see how everybody is doing now that the Wrath of the Crystal King is defeated. Ac actually, scratch that. Let's go ahead and first go into our third and final episode break of today's stream.